Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. Wow. Wow. The NFL Draft is tomorrow. I repeat, the NFL Draft is tomorrow. That is no joke. That is a fact. That is true. And I can't wait. I'm super stoked to see what the Eagles are going to do. And I'm so intrigued. There's so many different possibilities. If you asked 50 Eagles fans, not not even Eagles fans, NFL fans, what the Eagles are going to do, you will get so many different answers. And that's a good thing in terms of, you know, uh, how intrigued I really am. If it was set in stone, obvious, for example, Bengals fans, clearly they're going to be pumped up. So excited. They have a franchise quarterback, but they all know that Joe Burrow is the pick. So anticipation wise, there's nothing there. And I'm not trying to downplay how awesome it is to be able to land a franchise quarterback. That's not my argument here. But not knowing what the Eagles are going to do with that 21st pick, it somewhat gets me that much more excited for Thursday night. Will they move back? Will they move up? Will they stay put? Will Justin Jefferson be on the board? I mean, there's just so many question marks. And that's why I can't wait to pour a shit ton of popcorn in my bowl, load up the butter, pour it on to the point where it's just soaked and so soggy, and start throwing it into my face because I can't wait to watch this damn draft. There is this obsession with going up and getting C.D. Lamb because C.D. Lamb is a playmaker who can totally be an X-factor on this Eagles team. And I get the obsession with him because he's so talented because the Eagles lack offensive playmakers. And it, it was a clear sign last season that they had to go out and get someone who will help this offense. With that being said, though, I'm not all in the obsession train. I am not giving up other pieces. I've been on the record saying it before. For for the same people that want that CD lamb, you will be the same people pissed off when there's another position with a hole in there. Well, think about it. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Everyone who wants CD lamb right now probably also wanted Jalen Ramsey and wanted to give up two first-round picks and give up anything because you got to find a shutdown corner. Well, those same people who would have got Jalen Ramsey would now be complaining that the Eagles wouldn't be able to go get a playmaking wide receiver. You, you get my point here? You follow? So I am not giving up an obnoxious amount to go out and get CeeDee Lamb. I think it is very possible to still land some great players, some offensive changing players, guys that you need that can totally help Doug Peterson and the rest of the coaching staff when it comes to game planning and executing and being able to to make plays. These guys being able to make plays. There are plenty of options. This is one hell of a deep draft. I'm not giving up the farm just for a CD Lamb. But I am interested because I don't know if Howie Roseman is going to stay put. Something tells me he's either going up or he's moving back. I don't know why I feel that way. I'm just basing that off of my gut feeling. But something tells me he understands that some guys are moving up with the draft talk and Justin Jefferson might not be there. Now you're hearing reports that Jerry Judy has a knee injury and he might fall a bit. I don't think it would be anything even close to the Eagles being able to go up to get him. But it has been reported that it, it was false and not because of people who were reporting it, but there were teams who gave out information that he's having knee problems, so he will try and fall so these teams can go out and get them. It's sort of like, you know, hurting someone's stock on purpose so then that team can go out and then pick that person as they fall. Very interesting approach. I wouldn't put that past anybody in the NFL because at the end of the day, what's important? Going out and getting a player that will be significant for your team and teams feel the need that, hey, if I, if I can if I can somewhat make someone look bad so they'll start falling in the draft, maybe I'll be able to go get my guy. Well, if that's the case, Howie, start tweeting up about C.D. Lamb. Start tweeting up that he has all these problems and that maybe he'll fall to the Eagles. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. If you want him that bad, though. I was so anti, so anti Justin Jefferson. But the more and more I think about it, I, I am all about it. I just don't think he will 
be at, at that 21 spot. I, I don't know if any of the big receivers will be. And then you, you question, okay, well, if that's the case, if there's no wide receivers left on the board, that would be reasonable at 21. Clearly, if you really wanted a receiver that bad, you would somewhat reach for one at 21 and, and say, hey, I got my guy I wanted. If, if it was a reach, then whatever, but I got the guy I wanted. And that would be a scenario where maybe Howie Roseman elects to trade down so he gets another pick and he still gets the same exact guy he would have got at 21. I don't know if Howie Roseman is is that great at drafting to uh, to do that in my personal opinion, but that's not going to stop Howie Roseman because I've had this argument before. You know, from a fan's perspective, it's so easy to say, Howie Roseman's the worst. Howie Roseman's all for drafting. It's clearly a, a spot where he struggles. If you're Howie Roseman, though, you don't think that way. You're not, And I don't want my GM to think that way. I don't want my GM to think, well, I suck at drafting, so uh, let me just do something where I know I won't screw up. Like, I want my GM to think, I can do this. I want my GM to be confident. If it backfires, it backfires. But I still want my general manager to actually have some sort of confidence. He shouldn't be worried about messing up. He should be pumped up to say, okay, if I do trade back, I'm going to land on both of these picks. That's the mindset I want him to have. Why would I want a GM that goes, you know what? I I, I suck at drafting. Let's just see what I can do. I, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I want someone who thinks that he can totally land both opportunities. And I believe how he thinks that way. I believe how he feels confident in himself. Good. Good. I, I want him to feel that way. Really. Now, w- with this whole draft and the way it's going to be displayed on the TV networks. And I checked in on the WNBA a bit because they did the same thing. And I wanted to see what it would look like, how it would feel, the visual, how it would sound. I wanted to get a grasp of what the NFL is going to do. It worked out for the WNBA. There's no denying it. It it looked smooth, and it it definitely generated enough good content where I was, you know, intrigued by the way that it was all displayed on the TV markets. It feels weird, though. I'm not going to lie. As much as I love football, as much as we all love the draft, as much as we all love the NFL, just knowing what's going on in the world, it feels so odd. Now, I mentioned how the MJ documentary, it was that escape that all of us sports fans love. It felt like everyone was live tweeting at 9 o'clock on Sunday. So everyone was engaged with the same thing. And the NFL draft throughout Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's going to be the same way. Every sports fan, NFL fan will be tied together emotionally, live tweeting, talking about the draft. And it will bring that escape that all of us use sports for. So I'm, I'm cool with that. Obviously, I want that. It does feel weird, though. That's all. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know why I feel this way. I'm super stoked that it's here. Really, I mean that. I I want to see anything football-related, Eagles-related. Yes, I'm all about it. Something doesn't feel right, though, at the same time. That's all. I I don't know. I don't know, really. That's, That's as far as I can go with this. I can't put it into words because I can't explain this feeling. This is a very odd feeling for me. It's something I've never experienced before, and hopefully we never experience this all again. But based off of where this world is, I'm not going to say it's forced. I believe the NFL should move forward. If they can, they should, even if it's not what they want it to be. Nobody wants it to be this way. But if they can move forward with it, they should move forward with it. And it's obvious that they can, so this is the right decision. It still feel, feels forced, too, at the same time. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be going crazy and seeing the reactions of people and seeing the Eagles Twitter. Oh, that is going to be very interesting, especially if they don't get a wide receiver in the first round. I'm sold that they are. I'm sold that the mindset is wide receiver. No matter what, even if they get to 21, all the guys are off the board, all the guys that they would want, and then you see a Queen or you see a Murray, two positions where these are great players, they are fantastic players, 
but the Eagles want a wide receiver. Now, me personally, I wouldn't shut the door on those guys. If you can get a queen, are you kidding me? If you can get a Murray, uh, yeah, but I know the Eagles don't value the linebacker position. I'm just saying, though, those two guys, you can use those without a doubt. They are going to be big-time players in this league, and they can help your squad, and you can still get difference-making receivers in the second round, in the third round. I'm not opposed to that. I feel as if, though, the Eagles are. I just feel like they are 100% so focused on wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, that that's their mindset. I, I can't say that that's completely wrong, but I wouldn't go that way. I would look a different direction. I'm staying there. I'm just staying there, and I'm letting the chips fall the way that they do, and I'm utilizing all my draft picks. I'm not going up. Let's at least say that. I'm not going up unless it gets to the point where that one guy that you really want, that guy that's that's high up on your draft board, continues to fall, fall, fall. Then I would think about it. It depends on what the package is, though. I want my second-round pick badly, really badly. Dallas Goddard was a second-round pick. You think he was a big impact? Now, so was J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, so use it against me. I understand that's coming. Horrible pick. But there's also so much value in the second round. And you get more out of that second-round pick than you, you don't get. I don't know if that made sense. But what I mean is, you hit more times than not with that second-round pick. And I, I want that player. And think about how much of a package you need to put together to move up in the first round. It's not, yeah, uh, how about a seventh and, a, and and swap first? No, no, no. How about a Rasul Douglas and your first? No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. You got to give up assets, real assets. And I'm sorry, if you can get a Mims in the second round. All right. If you tell me I get Queen and Mims... I'm all on it. I'm all over it. All over it. Ayuk. Oh, ho, ho. what if he's available? I'm taking him. Plenty of guys that can help this offense and be X factors. There's the fascination with the CD Lamb. It's the same thing that happened with Jalen Ramsey. And look at that. The Eagles made out just fine. Darius Slay's a stud. He really is. There's plenty of ways, plenty of ways to make this work. And there's plenty of guys that can make this work as well outside of just the big time names that everybody gets so wide-eyed about and their mouth starts to drool and they forget about the long-term project and they forget about how there's other things that need to happen throughout a season and throughout a draft and with this whole entire roster. You need more pieces. Don't get so heavily, insanely invested on one target where there's a lot of holes on this team still. I believe they can totally use some help on this defense. They need a linebacker. Now, I don't think that they would spend a first-round pick on a linebacker, and I don't know if I necessarily would with that position, but they still need that hole. They can use that safety. They can use other players. Absolutely. Corner. Absolutely. It's a different mindset now. They're trying to acquire pieces that you can look down a five-year window and say, all right, this is this is it. This is the guy. These are the players that we are building this new identity with. It's a new identity, Eagles. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be very interesting. So the Mims, Rager is another name, by the way, that I just want to throw out there as a player who can play that the Eagles are gonna be looking at. Mims. There was this. Video that was going around from Inside the Birds podcast with Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan of Mims being interviewed. And they asked him about Philadelphia. And his response was he didn't have a great experience his first time in Philly. He was sort of scared. And take it to Eagles Twitter to start freaking out. Oh, this kid's so soft. Nelson Aguilar 2.0. Stop, really? That's how we're going to judge this guy? That's so comical to me. I just thought it got so overblown, so ridiculous. The tweet went viral. It was in a bunch of blogs. Relax. Okay, so maybe he had a bad experience in Philly, and he was scared for some reason. We don't know what he witnessed or what he saw or the people he saw or where he walked to. We don't know what occurred. Maybe something bad happened in front of him, and all right, oh, all right. 
there's plenty of great things in Philadelphia. There's plenty of beautiful things in Philly, and that's why we appreciate it so much. But let's not act like this place is the cleanest in the world. Let's not act like there's no crime in the world in, in Philly. Uh, come on. Uh, come on. Who knows what he saw? I'm not basing his ability to run or his ability to catch based off the fact that he was scared one time when he came here. I, I don't know. I just find that so silly in my opinion. I'm not going to base his football skills off of that one answer. Is it an ideal answer? I would say no. It's not ideal. It's not the difference in anything. Because Nelson Aguilar couldn't catch a football that relates to what he did. He seems like he has that mentality when you listen to his responses throughout this interview where, you know, he wants it. He wants it bad. And he knows that there's a reputation with Baylor wide receivers, and he wants to change that narrative. And I'm all for it. Hell yeah, I want to see you change it. I think he can be an absolute stud in this league, and it's someone that I am clearly intrigued by, and no answer would ever stop that. Except for if it's, yeah, I hate football or something like that. Then I might raise some eyebrows and think, maybe I won't pick this guy. Yeah, I don't feel like working out. Okay, maybe there's a couple answers that would change my opinion on it. But it has nothing to do with his experience walking in Philly one time. I don't know what he saw. If I go to Dallas, Texas, if I go to Washington, D.C., and I'm walking through these areas and I see a guy get robbed and the, the people start chasing him and, and the cops start flying around, what do you think I would say about that place? Oh, man, I went to D.C. once and this is what happened. It was a little crazy. That doesn't mean all of D.C. is that way. It doesn't mean it's like that all the time. It doesn't mean all the areas are that. But it happened when I was there that one day. Am I a different person now because that was my answer about D.C.? Or am I still the same person? That's all. Uh, that's all. Now, Peter King put out a report about likely players, players that would likely be traded on draft night. And Alshon Jeffrey was the last on the list. You saw Yannick Ngakwe on the list, which if you didn't see his Twitter battle with the co-owner of the Jags, go see that after this podcast. Holy hell, was that something. That's that's the era of sports these days. That's the that's where these athletes are. They can do whatever they want. They feel entitled. They can tweet however they feel. And that's what Twitter's for. But you got to be a professional as well. You don't go after your co-owner. Even if you're unhappy, and there's a track record with people being unhappy in Jacksonville, you still don't go out and start tweeting at your co-owner, and the co-owner's tweeting back and say, listen, dude, you're not helping your trade stock right now. We would clearly trade you if we had some sort of good offer on the table, and you're not helping us. I was cracking up. But getting back to the point, he was on the list, and now Sean was on the list, and I, I'm not going to say it was clickbait. Peter King has been around for a long time. I just didn't feel as if there was any substance to the piece about Alshon Jeffrey. He mentioned how the Eagles would like to get rid of him. There was this narrative about his personality, which we all know about. The contract's hefty. He has the Liz Frank injury. So the Eagles would like to move on from him. Okay. We sort of know that, right? And all he described was, how hard it would be to get rid of him. And if the Eagles did, they'd have to take on a good amount of money. Uh, okay. I don't see where this is going. So you claim he's likely to get traded, yet all you talk about in the article is how brutal it would be and how hard it would be for the Eagles to move on. So, in my opinion, that shouldn't fall under the likely to get traded category. I saw that as the Eagles would like to move on from him if it's possible that someone would take that offer, but who is going to? It doesn't seem like a lot of teams are jumping at the bits to go out and trade for Alshon Jeffrey. That didn't fall in the likely category. It's not the same as Yannick Ngakwe, who is clearly unhappy with where he's at. It's not the same as any of these other players that are on the list. Alshon Jeffrey is, yeah, the Eagles would like to, but I don't know if there's anybody really out there that would like to take that on. He's going to be injured for a while. He's making a lot of money. You look at where he has been over his seasons, and you look at last year specifically, it was a down year. So likely, I don't know if the word is likely. It, now, watch, it's going to happen, and then Broads, you're an idiot, okay? I've been there before. I just don't see how it relates right now. Unless he has some inside source, but he wasn't claiming that in the article. The article to me, when it came to the Alshon piece, was blah. It was just something to be out there almost. There was no substance to it. 
I didn't feel as if the Eagles were going to now trade him because of anything Peter King said. If anything, I think it's the opposite. And I think he's not going to get traded. I think more that than he will at this point. So I, I just felt there was no substance to what he was actually writing in that article. And I'm not here to knock him. He's a successful guy. This is going to be nuts, though. I am so stoked. It's going to be gnarly. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great time. How about the How about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Gronk. Gronk comes out of retirement. I was thinking that Bill Belichick would have been such a nice guy that he just allowed Tom Brady to get Gronk. I didn't think he'd actually make them trade for him, right? <laughs> wow. Now imagine if there's no sports or no NFL season for next year. Think about the team that would feel this the most. It would be that team. You go out, you get Tom Brady, you sign him to a couple years, but he's on the back end, if you didn't know that. You get Gronk. It would hurt the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the most. Now, Gronk, to me, I loved his personality in New England, and I loved the player that he was, but you, do you see him? He's slimmed down. He looks like a little skinny boy now. Is he going to be able to bulk up that quickly and be ready to just go out there and compete at a high level? I don't know how many times we've seen a team, a dynasty, kind of move on, and those pieces went elsewhere, and then it worked. Not many times. More times than not, you're getting, I don't know if I'll go as far as saying a failure, because if if Tom Brady and the, and the I almost said New England Patriots because it just flows out my mouth. But if Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go to the second round of playoffs, I'm not going to say that's unsuccessful. But at the same time, you know, they, they, they have championship-type mentality. When you get Tom Brady, it's almost Super Bowl or bust every single year. If they don't win the Super Bowl, they look at it as a letdown. So it's just weird. It's weird how expectations change a lot. And and that's how a, a lot of these conversations here in Philadelphia has been looked at over the last few seasons and last few years. The way the expectations are heading into a season, it just change. It changes so much when it comes to context and conversation. Look at the Flyers this year. You know, if they would have lost in the first or second round, all right, that's a success. If the Sixers would have lost in the first or second round, oh, no, 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 it is definitely not a success. Let's get rid of Elton Brand, Brett Brown, trade Ben Simmons. If the Eagles, if the Eagles didn't win the Super Bowl last year, everyone would have been pissed. Yet as the season went on and everyone started falling apart and injuries happened, the expectations changed, and then they end up winning the division at 9-7 and seven and going and fighting with Josh McCown in the postseason. They almost win, and then we look at it as a success because by the end, the way they rally together, okay, we can build off this. The expectations thing changes so much, and I honestly have no idea how I got tied into that part of this at all. The draft is tomorrow. Now, I'm not one of those guys who reads up on Mel Kuyper's mock draft 75.2 and then look at the next reporter and look at his 87th version of the mock draft. It's just something that I don't feel has that much value when they make so many damn mock drafts. I, I look into what people say and I, I do value their opinions here and there, but I'm I'm not one of those guys who reads up on a million different mock drafts and come up with 90 versions of my own mock draft. This is not how I roll. A lot of people enjoy that. That's their thing. I'm also not a fantasy guy. I play fantasy because it's part of football. It's part of being a sports fan. All my boys do it. You want to be in the league. I'm all I'm all in it because it's just Something to do with the boys, but I'm not a big fantasy guy. Billions of people in this world are, are fantasy guys. That doesn't make me right. I'm not a big mock draft guy. That doesn't make me right. I'm just not a big mock draft guy. That's all. I personally watch these players play, and I base my opinion off what I see and what I see in college and what I think they can be and what I see with some of their their combine stuff, and I, I come up with my own decision. I'm intrigued, though. I really am. I think there's so many different ways to look at this from an Eagles standpoint. There's so many different ways, and I have no clue which way they're going. My gut tells me they're going to stay with the wide receiver thought process, and I don't think that that's necessarily wrong. But if they're at 21 and there's a couple guys not on the board, 
I'm not going to reach either. Maybe I draft back. I wouldn't be opposed to picking queen. I, I think that there's value in other positions as well. And you can still go out and get your your wide receiver in the second round and in the third round that can totally make this offense still explosive. I'm not shutting the door on everything. That's just me personally. But my gut says they're going wide receiver no matter what. And, and we'll see if my gut is right or not. How he needs to be confident. You got to be confident. <laughs> I had to had to somewhat pause there because he does need to be confident. Is he confident? That's the question. That's the question. How does he feel? Oh, also, real quick, when we, when we were speaking about the Alshon thing, Deshaun Jackson put up a Instagram post sort of backing Alshon Jeffrey, supporting him, going with a little bit of the Jason Kelsey Mummers Parade concept. Or not the Mummers Parade concept, but the Mummers outfit at the Super Bowl Championship Parade. Alshon Jeffrey can't play anymore. Alshon Jeffrey's a bad teammate. And then a couple of the guys like the picture. So that's interesting. I don't know what that really means. That's journalism, though, in 2020. I love that, right? That's journalism. Go back and search their Instagrams and see their captions and see who likes it. And did he unfollow this person? Does he like the team pictures? It's crazy. It's crazy what we've gotten into. But here we are. And it's only going... I don't know if I would say up. I don't know if I would say down, but it's only going forward. You can be the judge of it if that's up or down. So thank you so much for watching. If you are watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and comment down below. If you are listening to this on the Apple Podcast app or any other podcasting apps out there, leave a rating and a review. You can use the review system as, as a comment section. I read those all the time. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time.